Welcome back everybody. My name is Dragagon and this is Great Tech New Horizons. So in the last video I left off with uh, having built up my area where I'm going to do the oil distilling. Uh, I've been working on the bees. Uh, I got my copter pack. Uh, in this episode, I have a couple of other things prepped and ready. The first one is gathering the last of my Vibrant Alloy in order to complete the HB uh, Vibrant Alloy quest. And then I have this special setup right here. You'll see that I've got 30 turbine casings there. I've got another 30 turbine casings there. Uh, these are my large steam turbines that I needed to make. Uh, I then have... Uh, this that I can put together, uh, let's see here, pull out the wrench. And the reason for this stuff is because I have, oops, I thought I had it ready. And I don't have nearly anything ready. All right, so I need two things of copper. Four things of rubber. Need to get those wire milled down. And then I need four of these guys, which are going to go into there. And let's see here. You all, you all. There we go. Four of that. That can go away. I thought I had all this prepped, and uh, clearly I was misremembering what all I had prepped. <laughs> so, there's those to make those in order to make these. Input hatch. I think the input hatch is what I need. Yep, input hatch. So there's those two guys, and then I need these two guys with those two things, and there are my HV dynamos. So that was everything I needed in order to make my um, uh, that first part of the big turbine quest. Uh, previously, uh, without showing you guys, I had made the extruder shapes for my turbine props. And then I went ahead and made these things. Oh, I don't think I have nearly enough energetic alloy. It wants six each for these guys. And then I need four each for these. So I'm going to have to go back and make quite a bit more energetic alloy. These are the small turbines I'm looking at using with the optimal steam flow there of uh, 12,000 liters per second. Um, what I can do with the 12,000 liters per second is um, the uh, this guy, the large steel boiler, produces uh, 24,000 liters per second. So having two of those energetic uh, small turbines, I can consume all of the steam from a large steel boiler, and that will make it so that I can... Uh, constantly be uh, producing uh, power. The Using the energetic alloy turbine blades, each of those will give me um, 240... Uh, sorry about all the binging. Uh, each of those will give me 240 EU per tick, so I'll be making 480 EU per tick uh, with this particular setup. Um, I can't go any larger than that. I would like to, um, but the only way I can go larger than that, if we look at the turbine blades, uh, I need to have the medium-sized turbine blades in order to uh, go up in power and the medium-sized turbine blades need these long titanium rods, and so that's where the issue is going to be, is having these long titanium rods, because I don't have titanium, because I haven't been to the moon yet. Um, so, uh, my goals for today are to get myself set up and be able to uh, 
Uh, I'm going to use my copter pack, try and go around, find a nether fortress so that I can start hacking at some uh, wither skeletons with a cleaver and uh, be able to collect my wither heads so I can make my first wither uh, nether star. And then once I have my first nether star, I can use the null catalyst in order to make uh, the rest of the stuff that I need. Null catalysts are kind of a pain. Um, they require you to have a previous null catalyst, uh, a magma cream, a blaze powder, and then a tiny pile of nether star dust uh, in order to make those. So it's, it's going to take me a bit. Um, the first one I can do, you get one nether star, I can duplicate it. And then with this stuff, I can then uh, make more nether stars with Salus Mundus. And that's where it gets problematic is constantly having to make balance shards in order to make the Salus Mundus. Um, I was considering going after the bees that will make the Salus Mundus uh, combs, the Urgast, uh, the Hydra, the Snow Queen. Uh, they also have the Salus Mundus bee itself, um, but it's only a specialty item uh, versus these other guys where it's the primary as opposed to the specialized one. Um, and I think the Snow Queen is the best out of the three of them. Uh, she's at 15%, Hydra's at 6 Urgast is at 8 Yeah, so the Snow Queen was the best of them. The problem with the Snow Queen is trying to get the Salus Mundus and the Urgast and, you know, this entire tree line down here in order to try and get that. So it was something I was wanting to do. Uh, it may happen eventually, but uh, probably not in the near future. So it'll be me going into the Twilight Forest, gathering up a whole mess of shards and constantly making balance shards so that I can uh, craft enough nether stars. And again, that is all so that I can make this dire crafting table um, the dire crafting table being uh, needing this crystal matrix and the crystal matrix needing the um, ingots and the ingots of course needing two nether stars and four diamond lattice each. So yeah, uh, fun times ahead. Uh, I will bring you guys back in once I've got a bit more done and I'll see ya. All right, I am back again, and I decided I wanted to go ahead and build the alloy smelter. The other reason for the alloy smelter is actually because I would like to be able to start making fused quartz, and that's what the alloy smelter is good for, is the fused quartz. Uh, the fused quartz I was looking at in order to make the reservoir. Um, it seems that that doesn't unlock in that fashion. Uh, I do have the vibrant crystals now unlocked. Um, the reservoir itself is um, six of the fused quartz plus two HV electric pumps and a cauldron, and that'll give you two of the four that you need for a reservoir. So I was looking at making this uh, in order to um, have the water necessary in order to power what I finally set up over here, which is <clears throat> the two turbines and large steam boiler. So the idea I'm going for here is that um, I'm going to move my tree farm straight out in front of the base here. So if we take a look at this, um, what I was looking at doing is right here in front of um, the... Uh, the advanced coke oven and the pyrolyze oven, I was going to put my uh, tree farm, have the wood come in. Uh, this will make charcoal, which goes to the uh, railcraft boiler to make steam for a cracker. And then the rest of the wood would come back to the pyrolyzer where I will um, break it down into uh, uh, wood tar and the wood, or not wood tar, I'm sorry, I will break it down into heavy oil. The heavy oil will go to d the distillery where it will be broken down into the sulfuric products, uh, desulfurized, and then brought up over to this area here uh, in a bunch of super chests uh, using the uh, Project Red stuff. Uh, and then from there, I was going to take the heavy fuel and run it into the uh, steam boiler because the steam boiler can burn it off and it takes 36 seconds 
to use up one can of heavy oil, which is slightly... Uh, it's a, the pyrolyzer making the heavy oil and then the distillery converting that to heavy fuel uh, is a little bit faster than how fast the large steam boiler will uh, use it up. So that's what I was thinking about doing that way. And that way the excess heavy oil gets used while I'm still making the light oil uh, or the light fuel, the naphtha and the refinery gas. And then that way I can power this HV and I can start moving stuff back into this area. I was looking at mainly the pollution type things going back here. So possibly moving the EBF back here and then starting to automate it so that I can send requests to it and get stuff made. Uh, and then the other side over here, if the tree farm is able to keep up with, between the advanced coke oven and the pyrolyze oven, I was wanting to put a second pyrolyze oven that makes wood tar and charcoal, and then take the charcoal and use LV extractors like I'm doing underneath my current tree farm in order to make lots of wood tar and then have that distill into benzene, because my understanding is that that benzene setup is power positive uh, and could actually run the other pyrolyze which is uh, converting heavy oil and stuff like that so all of this would be powered off of one nice big tree farm and uh, that would be uh, very handy to have uh, simply because all of that uh, can then be used uh, basically indefinitely uh, and uh, that way I can get lots of the uh, chemicals that I need. I can then use the cracker on the naphtha and the refinery gas in order to make the other byproducts like toluene, ethylene, uh, uh, methane, ethane, all of those things. A little bit of helium as well um, by doing the steam cracking, which is what the advanced coke oven and railcraft boiler are there for, is to provide the steam for a pair of crackers. So that is future planning there. Um, looking forward to working on those things. Um, the other thing, once I get the crackers built, I will need to build two 11 tall uh, distilleries that I want to put right here. And uh, that's why the roof is as high as it is, was from there, it's actually 12 high so that I can get up to the top and everything and be able to work with a couple of very tall uh, distilleries and then having their byproducts maybe run along here. Um, I may run the piping underneath and this may be a walkway and I may hollow out this area here and take it up to that high. Haven't fully decided on that yet, but uh, that is the general gist of what I'm wanting to do with this area. Just uh, kind of work with the pollution generating blocks and getting myself the, the chemical set up so that in the future I can do more things with uh, all the different chemicals that we'll need, uh, producing stuff like the poly, uh, floor, poly tetrafluorethylene, the PTFE stuff, uh, and uh, possibly PVC and things like that. So yeah, looking forward to expanding the base a bit more and uh, we'll see you back here in a bit. All right, I am back once more, and uh, this time I have for you that HV mixer that I've been talking about building for a little while now. I've got that. Um, so with the HV mixer, let's see what that opens up real quick here. Uh, nothing above it. So I guess, uh, I guess I just have it for good purposes right now. <laughs> uh, in any case, I made two more Canthal coils. Um, I had the 16 from the EBF and I used nine of them on this first pyrolyze oven, which left seven over. And so I went ahead and made another two, and I've now put together my second um, pyrolyzed oven here. This one will be making wood tar and charcoal uh, that will come out along here and make um, to some LV extractors, which will turn that into wood tar as well. And then I'll put a distillery maybe right around here where this guy is uh, that will distill the wood tar into benzene. And that will give me... Uh, a sufficient uh, product for uh, powering these guys. Um, the alternative that I was considering doing, which I can't do yet, is because the benzene will be here, I was thinking about using this small amount of space right here in order to pair up some 
gas turbines. And the gas turbines can then generate uh, EV power, I think, more easily. Um, there's a spreadsheet that I've got linked in my uh, set of uh, uh, documents that has uh, the calculations for what turbine paired with the steam, gas, and uh, plasma turbines, uh, the, the large turbine multi-structures, uh, what those small, normal, large, and huge turbines are capable of producing. And so that can then go over into this area and provide me with some additional power, uh, almost centralizing the power here between that guy over there and right here, and then I can use that to run it further into the base. So that's pretty much what I've been working on. I'm trying to get a setup that I'm comfortable with that will generate enough power to run all this stuff without um, clogging up. Uh, the alternative will be the fact that um, I, uh, ooh, that's not a good sign. Good thing I came over here. Um, the alternative will be a, uh, uh, a setup that hopefully it'll fill up super tanks, but it won't like completely stop producing anything. Uh, that's the, uh, the goal anyway. I'm not sure how that will work out for me. Um, but uh, basically I'm trying to make it so that I generate lots of materials and it doesn't cause other things to block if I run low on one thing because it's stopped up on something else. Namely, I was trying to use the heavy fuel because if I do heavy oil and then desulfurize the heavy fuel, and if I don't burn off most of the heavy fuel, it'll stop up uh, other things from working. Yes, the pyrolyzed oven will continue even when it's full. Uh, the distillery, I believe, also will continue and it'll just void its output. Um, but I didn't want other things to stop based on that. So I think I've got a pretty good setup going here. Uh, a little bit more work to do and then I can pull out the tree farm and move it out in front and then I can start getting these guys hooked up and see how they do in terms of how much material they need to use versus how much uh, wood that one will produce. My understanding was that um, a full-size farm will power uh, several of these guys with the Cooper nickel coils. So hopefully that'll be half as many with the Canfall coils and uh, they'll do reasonably well uh, and not compete too much with the advanced Coke oven. So that's next up on the list and uh, we'll see you guys back in a bit. And I'm back once again and uh, this time I have the Advanced Assembling Machine 2. Now, the whole reason I have to build this thing is I was looking at upgrading some capacitors in order to get a max size for, um, sorry, Ender IO farming station uh, for the wood that I'm going to be chopping down. Now, the basic capacitors are pretty easy to make. When you go to uh, upgrade them to the double layer capacitors, it only takes an MV assembling machine along with some molten energetic alloy. Not a big deal. It's when you try and move up from that to the octatics, you need the HV assembling machine. As I hadn't completed it yet, I went ahead and built it. It did take quite a bit of resources, a little bit of time, not too bad. I had everything basically on hand. I had to grind up a little bit more uh, minerals and clean them and get them ready. But there is the advanced assembling machine, completing that quest as well in the HV line. Um, I was a little conflicted. Uh, it's, sometimes it's nice and sometimes it's frustrating when I want to make something new and it requires a new machine. Depending on the machine and what resources I have on hand, this one was nice because I had basically everything I needed and it's all up and running at this point. Uh, in my inventory, I went ahead and made some more energetic alloy ingots. I grabbed some of the vibrant alloy ingots that I had made previously. And I am going to use this guy right here, the advanced fluid extractor. And I'm going to go ahead and get those pieces put together uh, so that I can assemble it. Um, I can do the one in here, so I probably will. Four of those, two of those, and then wait for this thing to be done. There we go. That should do nicely. And that should get me where I need to be with the um, double layer capacitors. 
And while I'm doing that, let's go ahead and get those guys melting down as well. There we go, two of those. And there's the six of those. I'm not sure what kind of power this is going to take. Hopefully it doesn't take too much power. Two of those, whoops, not there. Two of those and, oh, I put the other, I put the four glowstone that I need right over here. There we are. Slap that four glowstone in there and let that go to town. Go ahead and move this guy because he is in the red. Just so I don't forget. Oh, not too bad. It barely used over 100,000 EU. So that wasn't hardly anything at all. But that is my octatic capacitor. Uh, the octatic capacitor I am going to use inside um, this guy up here. Not right now, of course. I got to get stuff moved around. Oops. There we go. So I can slap him in there and get this. Uh, greatly enlarged um it'll it'll make a uh i think it's an it's not an 11 by 11 it's an even larger field but a max size farm with that thing using this uh, octatic capacitor should provide me with enough room let's just come up here real quick there we go should provide me with enough room with this guy here in order to make the uh uh, a very nice large farm in order to power all of this stuff right over there. So yeah, I'll be clearing out this area here soon, um, bringing some uh, power and some cables. I'm probably going to be using my uh, item conduit and energy conduits where I can, uh, simply because trying to get power and stuff over to them can be problematic, um, especially with as big as the field can be. Um, so yeah. A little bit more ahead of me uh, for today, um, and uh, then I will uh, see you guys back here once I have uh, stuff rearranged. All right, guys, back for one last update. You can see I've started filling in the floor of my uh, my working area down here. I have my pyrolyze oven working. Uh, you'll see the couple of weird textures there because if we drop down below, I have moved my medium distillery up here moved four of the basic fluid extractors down here along with all the piping. Sorry for all the extra noise. Moved the advanced gas turbine that I also used to power the advanced distillery. I have another advanced gas turbine that runs this pyrolyze oven. A turbo gas turbine which runs this pyrolyze oven which isn't running right now because I'm kind of waiting for the tubes to fill with the benzene and then another one right here that runs the distillery. Uh, so as soon as my pipes all fill up with benzene, I can start, I'll, I'll probably kick this guy off. Um, I'll need to run the piping for him first, but essentially this pipe here is going to run over and into, um, shoot, I probably need to put an input on here. Um, so I'm going to need to uh, make a spot for an input, probably this guy right here, uh, run the heavy oil over to it so that it can process it, and then I can start thinking about running the distilleries down here uh, in order to uh, desulfurize my various gases, well, my various fuels, uh, and then start working with those. I haven't turned this guy on yet. I basically just have him set up. Um, what I've done is... I used the Indorio conduits in a round robin mode so that it will evenly distribute wood between all three of these guys. Just in case I'm running low, for whatever reason, it'll distribute automatically between all three of them. Um, and then this guy is going to make charcoal. Um, this little setup right here, I'm going to stick two uh, steam compressors. Uh, the uh, um, 
whatever the upgraded ones are of the steam compressors here and then have them output and have it go into here. That's why you'll see there's red here and green here. The idea is that I'm going to extract the charcoal out. Charcoal will go back in to power it and then the charcoal will also go to the compressors and then the compressors will be marked with um, an uh, a red arrow for the extraction in order to put it over here so that it comes out as blocks of charcoal for the steam portion which will be fed to the crackers which are going right in there. I have not worked on the crackers at all. Uh, that's uh, not a priority for me right now. The big thing was getting this benzene set up. Um, I did a little calculation uh, with how fast it can produce benzene and uh, as long as my calculations hold out, I can power the tree farm, this pr uh, pyrolyze oven, that pyrolyze oven, and the distillery all with this one small setup. Uh, powering the cracker and the other two distilleries is another matter. Um, and I have to figure out how I'm going to do that. Likely what would have to happen is this pyrolyze oven would need to be upgraded from the canfall coils to the nichrome coils. Uh, in order to speed up instead of the uh, uh, 32 seconds it takes per run here, it would drop it down by another 50%. Uh, and, uh, you know, hopefully that would be good enough to get enough benzene, but that'll also mean that I'll need to add on a number of uh, the extractors down below to keep up with the amount of charcoal that it produces. Uh, but that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, the last thing that I want to do is here I do want to go ahead and put in some benzene gas turbines once I get to the moon. Um, but at least for right now, that is everything there. There is one last exciting bit of news that I have. Uh, it certainly made all of today's productivity, uh, I think, well worth it. I have over here in my possession my diligent bees. I finally got a, um, I finally took a cultivated diligent uh, princess and a cultivated diligent queen, or I mean drone, used just the regular bee house and because it had the diligence I ended up getting lucky and this is the leftover guy. I don't know what he is. I really don't care. All I care about is that when it combined the pairs it said, oh, diligent queen or diligent princess, diligent drone, uh, completely pure and so I stuffed them in here to get started on those. So that makes now my Majestics, my Unwearies, uh, over here the Diligent, and then in here I have my Noble, my Common, my Tropical, Cultivated, Meadows, and Forest. And each of these guys all right now, the this one's Ignoble, and that's because the Pristine is in here uh, uh, in order to get the uh, combs that it produces. Uh, it doesn't have any right now, um, but those are to make that uh, apiarist outfit, uh, hoping to have that eventually. Uh, it is a very slow process using the apiaries because you get reduced production from, say, the bee house without using frames. And of course, that's why is because I should be using frames in that, and I'm not. So I may do that a little bit later, um, just to give you an update on uh, my Thaumonomicon. Uh, I have gone and done a bit more research, basically trying to avoid anything that has forbidden knowledge because I'm tired of warp already. And until I get to um, being able to make the pure tier, I really don't want to deal with any kind of forbidden knowledge type stuff. So that's all well and good. Uh, so, but I unlocked several of those. I went into witchery and knocked out the altar and the kettle. Um, I was in here and I took care of the imminent stone and the magical wood. I haven't done the angel block yet. Uh, and then I went into Appomancy, took care of the restraint frame, the healing frame, the proven frame, uh, the tele, um, temporal, me metabolic, resilient, gentle, and oblivion frames. And then I also got the enchanted earth research done. So, you know, quite a bit of research going on there, um, trying to get things uh, taken care of as best I can as I have time, uh, and, uh, you know, basically tackling multiple projects at once. Um, I did make the Yetta wrench uh, so that I could work with the conduits that I had. Um, I don't think I've completed any other quests that you guys haven't already seen. Um, so... 
yeah, uh, next thing up is to, um, I'm probably going to take the time and go into the nether and at least get my first three uh, wither skeleton skulls so that I can start tackling the wither. And in order to do that, I probably will go and do this quest over here. I'm going to go ahead and make the 32 reinforced obsidian in order to go to the wither killing chamber um, and uh, just knock those out. I should already be able to take care of this. I just need to find a bit more bone meal. I have plenty of fertilizer, and then I already have two sprinklers, and I'll end up picking those up when I rebuild my farm. So, yeah, uh, everything is coming along nicely today. Uh, it did take all day to get here, but it was a nice reward just getting those diligent bees done as I was uh, running through this setup. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here, and I will catch you all in the next video. Till then.